All right, this video is going to go over solving by square root. Basically, when you solve by square root, you want to get the x squared by itself. So like this one, that x squared is not by itself. Same with like all of these. You would have to make moves first. But when x squared is by itself, basically you just square root both sides. And when you square root both sides, this number over here gets a plus minus in front of it. And what happens is the root and the square cancel, and it just leaves x. And then you just solve this right here. The square root of 25 is plus minus 5. Where most students mess up, though, is this plus minus. They usually forget that. All right, so like when it's not by itself, you have to make it by itself. You have to isolate whatever's there, or you have to isolate that x squared. So you have to move whatever's there. So like this one, I would have to add one. Now I would have x squared equals 25. Then I could root both sides. Don't forget the plus minus. So I'd get my answer. Same thing with this next one. You're going to make a move. Then you would have the same situation. This next one, you have to make two moves. So add one first, then divide by five. Then x squared would be by itself. Then it'd be just like these other problems. Okay, this next one. It's not always going to be just x squared. Sometimes you'll have like parentheses squared. This, what's inside here, doesn't matter yet. So like just parentheses squared would be considered the square by itself. So like this problem, the first thing you should do is you should root it. And so you'd get like x minus 1 equals plus minus 4. This plus minus here means you're going to have two answers. One of them where it's equal to the positive, And one of them, sorry, one of them where it's equal to the negative. And then you just solve each. Like that. So like this next problem, the square, I don't care what's inside here right now. This square is not by itself because of this minus one. So like I would have to add one first. Then the square would be by itself. So then I could root both sides and solve it just like the problem before it. Um, this next one, you would have to make two moves to get that square by itself. And then you could root it and it would be exactly like these problems before it. But the key takeaway is try to isolate the, the square before you root it. And when you root it, don't forget plus minus. Now, another thing you're gonna have to know to do this is how to break down roots. Basically, what you want to do, you'll see something like this, root 75. Uh, that's not, you don't immediately know the answer to that like you did like root 25. Well, what you do is you think of all these perfect squares, and basically you just find one of them that divides into your number. So like 75 is divisible by 25. You could rewrite this as root 25 times root 3, because 25 times 3 makes 75. And then you know what root 25 is, it's 5. So this problem just becomes 5 root 3. So like here's another example, 24, root 24. Find a number on this list that goes into 24. Well, that would be 4, right? So I could rewrite this problem as root 4 times root 6, because 4 times 6 makes 24. And then you know what root 4 is, it's 2. So this is just... 2 root 6. This is breaking down roots. And then lastly, one thing you'll need to know, um, you'll see every now and then like a root of a fraction. When this happens, it's just root over root. So you kind of break it up and then root 9 is just 3, root 25 is uh, 5. So like that's how you would do those problems. Okay, let's look at some examples. This first one, remember you're trying to get x squared by itself. So you would add 98 to both sides. 
So now you got 2x squared equals 98. You still don't have x squared by itself, though, so you got to divide by 2. Now that the square is by itself, you can root both sides. Don't forget your plus minus and get your answer. This next one, the root's already by itself. So you can go ahead and root it right here. Don't forget your plus minus. Now you're looking at root 24. That is not a perfect square. So this goes back to breaking down a root. Find a perfect square that goes into it. 4 goes into it. So 4 times 6 makes 24. So this one becomes root 24 becomes 2 root 6. Just don't forget you had a plus minus. So it's plus minus 2 root 6 like that. This next one, technically the square is by itself already. So you can go ahead and just root it. Um, so now you have x plus 5 equals Square root of 64 is 8, so you have plus minus 8. This is where you have to write it twice. Once where it equals the positive 8, and once where it equals the minus 8, and then solve each one by subtracting 5. So you get your answers. Okay, this next one. You are, your x squared is not by itself because of that plus 2, so you have to minus 2. So now you have x squared equals 28. Then you're going to root it. Don't forget plus minus. So you get x equals plus minus root 28. Then you have to break down root 28. That's root 4 times root 7. So it's 2 root 7. So my answer is x equals plus minus 2 root 7. The next one, x squared is not by itself. So your first move is to add 16. So now you have 2x squared equals 16. Divide by 2 to get that x squared by itself. Now you can root it, plus minus. Root 8 breaks down to be root 4 times root 2. So that's 2 root 2. This is one of the most common ones, 2 root 2. So my answer is x equals plus minus. 2 root 2. Okay, moving to this column. Um, get x squared by itself. So now you have x squared equals negative 9. Anytime you square a number, whether it's like 5 or negative 5, you're going to get a positive number here. So it's never going to become a negative number. Anytime you have x squared equals a negative number, the answer is no solution. It's actually no real solution because you could have imaginary solutions, um, but we're not going to go that deep right now. So we'll move on. This next one, get x squared by itself by adding 1 first. Divide by 6. Now you can root it, plus minus. So you get x equals plus minus root 6. Root 6 does not have any perfect squares that go into it, so this root's already broken down, so that's where I would stop. Okay, this next one, I don't care what's inside this parentheses. I just care that parentheses squared is by itself. Well, it's not, so I have to move that minus 10 step 1. Now that it's by itself, that square, I can root it, plus minus. Square root of 25 is 5, so I have x minus 3 equals plus minus 5. This is where you write it twice. Once where it's the positive, once where it's the negative, and then solve each one by adding 3. Okay, this next one. Get that x squared by itself, so add 4. Divide by 9. Now that the square is by itself, I can root it, plus minus. Minus. 
All right, this is a fraction and a root. Remember I said when this happens, you can break it into root over root. So it would look like this. Then just take the root of both of those. So the root of four is two, the root of nine is three. So I'd get plus minus two thirds. And then this last problem is kind of tricky. Basically, the first thing you do is get that square by itself. So add four. Now that the root's by itself, or the square's by itself, I can root it and put plus minus in front. Root 18 breaks down to be root nine times root two. That's three root two. Now, this one, you're gonna have to write it twice. Once where it equals the positive three root two, once where it equals the negative three root two. Solve each one. Now, slam the brakes real quick. These are not like terms. You can't just be like three, three root two minus two is one root two. This is incorrect. These are not like terms. You cannot combine them. So all you do is you just leave it separate. So you could either put like three root two minus two, or you could put it as like negative two plus three root two, same thing. So over here, it'd be like negative three root two minus two, or I would probably write it negative two minus three root two, but it doesn't matter. Any of these four answers are correct. But the key takeaway is if you have something with a root, like a number with a root, and you go to add or subtract something to it, you cannot combine those. They are not like terms. The only way I could have combined those if it said like, is if it would have said like, minus two root two, now they would be like terms. They would both have that root two. But for this problem, they were not like terms. I did not combine them. I left them separate. All right, that is how you solve by square root. So I hope this video helped.